Hello students of statics, this is Dr. Dan Baker. And in today's example, we are going to revisit an example we worked back when we were solving for shear and moment at distinct locations. You may remember this beam and we solved for shear and moment at C and we set up the free body diagrams to solve for the shear moment and axial load at D. Okay, so instead of focusing just on those two points today, we are going to draw the shear moment diagrams for the entire beam, and we're going to focus on the application of the graphical method. Okay, so this is like the problem statement drawing. This is not yet a free body diagram. Now, to speed up our process through this example, I have gone ahead and solved for the reactions. Keep in mind, to solve for those reactions, you can convert this 2 newton meter distributed load into a point load, right? 2 newtons meters happening over 15 meters gives you a value of 30 newtons acting right through the centroid, which is going to be 7.5 meters from the right end. Okay, so converting into equivalent point load, solving for the reactions, these are those reactions. All right, so using this graphical method, I want in, um, actually it doesn't really matter what method you use, you need a true loading free body diagram. So let's go ahead and draw that. So I'm going to draw it right below here, keeping everything stacked right on top of each other. Uh, external forces here, 10 newtons, this distributed load. Two newtons per meter. Then I had a support force here. Uh, this is at A, so 23.75. Over here at B, a vertical force, 16.25. Now, let me add on here. I did add in on this example previously a 5 Newton applied horizontal load, which would give me a 5 Newton horizontal load there at A. But again, I can go ahead and add these here if I want to. But these two horizontal forces are not going to enter into the shear moment diagrams at all. Zero. Okay, they're actually independent of internal shear and internal moment. Now there is the idea, the concept, which we don't cover here in statics, of combined loading. If you actually stretch this beam, if you're pulling on it as well as loading it from the side, you're actually looking at a combined loading case. And so you would need to include that in the design of this beam. We just don't have all the tools to do that yet here in statics. And so again, this is our true loading free body diagram. And really the, the big thing that differentiates a true loading free body diagram from a equivalent loading free body diagram is whether I represent this two newtons per meter as a distributed load, which we should, versus a point load, which we should not. Okay, because we talked about that the distributed load and the point load have externally equivalent forces, but we're looking internally to this beam. Okay, so there's my free body diagram. Next up, I'm going to draw my shear diagram. Now again, please draw these right on top of each other for both your sanity and our own trying to grade your work. Um, it just makes everything fit so much nicer together. So here is my x-axis for my shear diagram. Now, if you want to, on your diagram, you could put a little note here that says, hey, every value on this diagram is going to be in Newtons, okay? Because they're shear forces, and we had um, everything given in this problem in Newtons. Label all of those terms. All right, so in this case, we have a jump downwards due to the 10 newton force on the left end. Okay, we're gonna jump down to minus 10. Okay, downward force, downward jump. We have no load between this point here over to this point here on the diagram. This is from the left end to point A. Therefore, we get a zero change in our shear value. So I was at minus 10. I'm not going to jump up 23.75. Okay, so I go up 10 here to hit zero. Another 13.75 to here. So this is at 
0.75. Again, no change or no value of my load it means no change in my shear flat line. Now we're going to push downwards because of this constant value distributed load. Value of your load is the slope of your shear. So fundamentally here, 2 newtons per meter slope, and it's going to be downward because these arrows are pushing downward. Okay, so we'll find out that what will happen is that we're going to drop downwards here. I'll go ahead and label this. So this is at that value of rise over run, right? 2 newtons per 1 meter. And it's dropping downward, so it is negative. And then at the end here, we are going to jump back up. We actually ended up down here at 16.25, a negative value. And then jump back up to close to zero. Okay, all shear and moment diagrams close to zero. Now to validate that this all works, we can also check, right, we talked about that the total change in the shear is going to be the area under the load. Okay, so from this point up here, right, positive 13.75, we are going to drop a distance uh, of the area, right? So the area of this is equal to minus 30. Minus, because the height fundamentally is a minus 2, and the length there was 15. And it's a rectangle, right? So 2 times 15 is 30. And so if you look at the difference in values between 13.75 down to minus 16.25, you have a difference of minus 30. So that is my shear diagram. For the moment diagram, we're going to do the same thing. It's the same process, a little bit more complex because now we have this kind of distributed shear coming all the way across. So here is my moment line. So this is my x-axis. Here is my moment. Now there are no couples on this problem, so I don't anticipate seeing any vertical shifts in my moment, not at the beginning, not at the end, not in the middle, okay? Because only a concentrated couple would give me that vertical change. So I'm going to start at zero, I'm going to end at zero, just like I did here with my shear. Now at this point I look and I say, well, I started with a negative shear. Okay, so the value here of my shear was minus 10. And so if the value of the shear is the slope of your moment, it turns out that this slope right here is minus 10 to 1. So over 5 meters, we reach a value down here of minus 50. Now it shouldn't be a huge surprise that also the change in the shear is the area, excuse me, the change in the moment is the area of the shear. This area here is minus 50, minus 10 magnitude times a horizontal length of 5. All right. So we can do the same thing as we're moving across. Now we shifted from a negative shear value to a positive shear value. And so from here to this line there, we're going to go upwards like this. And again, the value of the shear is the slope of the moment. So run of 1, rise of 13.75 per 1 meter horizontal. And we could find that the area in this section, right, 13.75 times a distance again of 5 is 68.75. So if we went from minus 50, add on 68.75, we end up with a value at this point of 18.75. Now we switch shapes, right? We went from rectangles. Now we have kind of a triangular shear. And so if you think about that we're doing integrals, right, from a uniform value here to a linear slope here. If here we have a linear, we're going to go to quadratic, okay, basically going up one in our power of polynomials. And so here we'll continue to go up until we hit this point here where shear is equal to zero. Okay, that looks like this. 
levels off. Value of shear is zero means we're at a maxima for our moment, maxima or minima. In this case, um, is a maxima going from positive to negative. And then this is going to continue at a quadratic function, curving back down here to close to zero. Now, to solve for this value, this is an important value to solve for. It might be our maximum value. We don't know yet. We need to find a couple more areas. One area we can find is this area right here, right? This triangle. This triangle has an area of 13.75 times a distance. Now, this is an unknown distance. Okay, let me just put it in here as an unknown, call this x for now. Um, and then we're going to take one half times that to find its area. In order to find that, you have a couple of options. I think one of the simplest options is to create similar triangles. Okay, so I'm going to put it off to the side here. So with similar triangles, okay, and we just called this horizontal distance from this point to this point x. Okay, remember similar triangles are basically matching that both of these triangles have the exact same angle here and here. Okay, so therefore they have actually all the same angles because they're both right triangles. Not that all right triangles have the same angles, but these ones do because they share that same angle there. And so with these similar triangles, I can write an equation that tells me a ratio of their height to their length. Okay, so the height 13.75, that takes care of the height over here on this side. And we'll look at then the ratio to the length. The length there is a value of x. And this is going to equal, right, ratio of height to length. The height over here, 16.25. And the horizontal distance, we're going to look at 15 minus x, right? We know the total length is 15 minus that distance x. And so this value is 16.25. And we're going to divide that by 15 minus x. So now I have an equation. It is a one unknown equation, and I can find out that this value of x is equal to 6.875 meters. Now, noting I didn't start this value of x way over at x is equal to 0. I started it right here. So you can think of this as like a local function. And so I know that this distance x from the coordinate of 10 meters to the right um, is equal to 6.875. So if I know that, that value is 6.875, I also can figure out essentially that my area is going to be the 13.75 times this 6.875 divided by 2. So that gives me a total value there of 47.27. Right, one half base times height to find the area between x at 10 and then also here x at what is now 16.875. And then it shouldn't be a surprise, but it's a good cross check that we can also find the area here in this triangle, and the area there is 66.02. Right, and I could find that because I take 15 minus the 6.875 times 16.25. And so if I add 18.75 plus 47.26, the change in my moment, right, area under shear is change in moment, I get a value here of 66.02. And again, all the values here on my moment are going to be in Newton meters. And so I'm also showing here that I have a change of 66.02 to close to zero. Okay, so all of those things check out. So this shows us how we can use the graphical method to chart not only the shape of this function, but also every single value um, along its length as needed. Uh, and once again, we could back this up with a calculus-based technique. For those of you who are, in, who are in my class at CSU, you'll find accompanying this video, a link right below it on our content page, will be a full solution that will show you either how to use the calculus equations for every single loading segment. Now, when we talk about loading segments, 
we're essentially looking at um, spaces in between which things don't change. Okay, so this actually has three different, one, two, three, three different loading segments along its length. And so you basically would need a calculus equation or a section cut in each one of those loading segments. But this enables us to solve, like I said, for the shapes, for the maximum and minimum values, all the points of inflection, um, all of those values we need for a shear and moment diagram. Thanks for your attention today.